Now, Linda Sakulu is one of the most esteemed award-winning actresses in our era. She began, began her career at the prolific Natel Playhouse, and soon after that, she blazed through the television scene with sassy roles like Cleo in Generations and multi-dimensional characters like Nikiwe Sobeko in The Soapy Sedingo. But our favorite, favorite role has to be her starring in the movie Felix. Have a look at this. Get Mrs. Clabo on the line, please. Her son's application has been successful. Is that one of wide birth, boys? In every one of us lies a talent waiting to be shared. Tell me, how was our boy's first day at school? Very nice. But while some wait for it to be discovered, others make it happen. Thinking of auditioning. You know you need more than rhythm. <laughs> Hardly jazz. This is the drum solo from Living Dead's Rigor Mortis Rock. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. Are you reading, boy? No, sir. I'm playing the Penui Seal, sir. Look, this is a classic jazz concert, not some hip hop game. Is it Sifonia Gatata? Yeah. I think it's broken. I think you need lessons. But I can't just play. I have to read, Bracho. Read. For Tata's way. We'll make him proud. I'm trying to solve it. But I don't want to be a musician no more. Why not? Because you end up dead. Let's all be existentialists. Let's party. We are the kings of the school, so don't mess with us, you fool. We cool. Felix, we've got to get your sex back, man. Ladies and gents, the buzzer boys! This is the story of an ordinary boy with an extraordinary talent that changed every life it touched. Mr. Impresario! That's me, how? Oh. I loved, loved, loved that movie so much. I cried so much in it. Like now it's almost like <laughs> reminding me of it. Connect with us on our social media pages if you would like to ask Linda any questions. And please do remember to use the hashtag Afternoon Express. Oh, Felix. It's basically South Africa's B Billy Elliot. Yes, yes, yes. Written by Shirley Johnson. Yeah. Shot here in Cape Town. Yeah. And um, I had a fantastic time shooting that, so, yeah. It was, I believe it, uh, well, I heard it was written by a woman, directed by a woman, That's produced great. by a woman, like the whole thing was yes, done. Yes, directed by Roberta Durant. Incredible. Uh, our DOP was Natalie Harhoff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What so, a great experience. What yeah. does a movie like that do for your career? Do you think enough people go and support local cinema? You know, local cinema isn't getting as much acknowledgement as I think it deserves. Yeah. Um, and the reasons are varying, truth be told. And whether it's a question of, you know, how often can we create movies? What are the budgets that we're looking at? And um, yeah, the society that we live in is so hedonistic. They want something that is just going to be so easy on the eye and quick and fast and so forth and so yeah. forth that sometimes um, local content might not necessarily be hitting the right note sometimes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that's why I say it's fearing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think the whole world, I suppose, needs fresh content, fresh movies, mm. and I think it should all start in South Africa. Like, if you look overseas, there's just been all these remakes of all these movies. This like, we've seen them. Come up with something new. This is very true. And <laughs> I think that um, one of the things that I do note, if one compares themselves from one country to the next, mm. um, or one culture to the next as well, the more pride you have with what it is that you are, and where you come from, the more inclined you are to want to support and, yeah. and build upon that. So I think that South Africans as a whole yeah. need to embrace South African content a lot more. So I think the whole of South Africa is completely in love with you because of Cleo. <laughs> like, what a great, great character. But what was the character that I think has meant the most to you in your life? She was, I can't even say there is a single one character yeah. because they all um, require different parts of me. So um, I remember when I first started with Nigiwa many, many years ago mm. that I literally would sweat bullets trying to encapsulate <laughs> this powerful woman. Yeah. And, you know, if I'm playing Felix, I'm, I'm reminiscing about what it felt like for my grandmother to raise her children under hardship. Mm. So all of these characters have got different um, parts and points of the human condition that I need to explore. and. Mm through exploring that, then it's obviously going to be a challenge to, to, to encapsulate that character. So they're always fun and hard <laughs> yeah. to work on. Whenever I think of you, I think the word that defines you perfectly is lady. 
You are such a lady. And, like, you seem quite withdrawn and shy. And then when you get on stage or when you're in front of a camera, something happens and you are just so alive and you just take on whatever character you're playing in the most magical way. You're so, so, so you're such a pleasure to watch. What is your process? Like, I want to know what is happening in your body and in your mind for that transformation. You know, strangely enough, this is, I mean, everyone has their own style. Yeah. But for me, this is going to sound weird. I have this feeling that as an actor, you don't live your full life in consciousness all the time. Because once you um, um, encapsulate a character, yeah. you're allowing that person to live through your soul. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's quite deep. So, um, uh, as, a, as an individual, you will be one thing, and then once you are allowing that vessel of a character to live through you, yeah. you must allow them 100% to live through you. So that's you sharing your soul with all of your characters. Yeah. Which is why sometimes for actors, it's so difficult to pull back from an experience because you feel those emotions for real. You don't just breeze through it if you choose to um, yeah. go into it you know, yeah. If that's your style, I suppose mm. that's like method acting. Mm. But then sometimes that would be quite difficult to choose some characters. Like, are there any characters that you wouldn't do because it would be too intense to go through them? The older I get, the less likely I am to say that there isn't a character I wouldn't be curious to play. Yeah. Because, um, because humans are so fascinating. Yeah, <laughs> and um, one of the lovely things about being an actor, depending as well how you choose to work, is that you are not allowed to judge your character. Yeah. I don't believe you should ever judge a character that you're playing. So, because once you've started judging them, then you cannot let them live in you. Yeah. So. Because you've got to have that conviction. Is there mm. a character that you'd still love to play? Oh, yeah. I'd love to play like an action character like Laura Croft or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could see it. <laughs> I saw you walking in those tights. You could do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you also do a lot of work for actors' rights. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um,. More than actors' rights, I do do a little bit of facilitation and so far as yeah. um, giving talks to young actors who are curious about yeah. getting into the industry. Yeah. Um, I am affiliated to Saga. I, I'm not part of the panel of Saga, and mm. Saga is the guild for actors' rights and yeah. things, and I 100% support them because without Saga, I think that we would... We're we fighting so hard for so many things that are pertaining to actors' rights. Yeah. And Fair pay, mm, mm, good working royalties hours, and royalties, yeah, yeah. all sorts of things. So thank heavens for a, a platform like Saga. Yeah. But on a personal capacity, I'd say that it's just every once in a while, when I get an opportunity to just enlighten young actors, then I'm happy to do so. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We know that you don't often like to do interviews, so we're so <laughs> grateful to have you on Afternoon Express, and I'm pretty sure that all of your fans are absolutely loving seeing here today. In fact, let's hear what they have to say. Absolutely. So much to learn from Linda, and we've asked you if you've got any questions for her. We've got Ayanda Teddy who asked, I love her so much. But my question is, out of all of the characters that she's portrayed, which one does she enjoy playing the most? Yeah, like I say, they, they're all special to me. I, I can't, it's like a person saying, which, which child do you like the most? <laughs> they're all equally special. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There you got your, you've got your answer, Ayanda. We've got Humutsa Divine who says, Matung, where has she been? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the beauty about this industry. You dip in and ask for, you know, working on different mediums. I, you know, I love doing theatre, so it's not just looking for television work all the time, but theatre is mm. also very relevant, and it's good to, to keep on at it because it hones your skill in a different way than television and film day. Lovely. Mm. Well, Linda, we've got a question here that I'm pretty sure you've never been asked before by Monk Osikasi, who says, if she were to be a musician, what genre kind of music would she sing? I am so tone deaf, it's not even funny. <laughs> um, I am not a musician, I'm afraid. I appreciate music, but I'm not a musician. So um, if I ever had to choose one, I, I don't know. I really, I don't know. <laughs> but thank you for the question. <laughs>